All right. Well, thank you for, oh, let's start the timer as well. Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Eugene Romero, and what I'm going to talk about is securing your app's communications with Kubernetes, Azure Key Vault, and TLS certificates. Now, I'm using TLS certificates because it's a cool keyword, but really the solution I'm going to show works for any kind of secrets that you might need to inject into your applications. Before I start, who is Eugene Romero and why should you be here listening to me today? The why? Well, you're already here, so it doesn't really matter. I work at Capgemini as a senior cloud and DevOps engineer. I've been in the industry for about 15, a little bit longer than 15 years. And when I am not doing development, I ooh, lost a sign over there. I enjoy restoring and modifying old gaming systems. So especially if you like uh, Game Boys, do come talk to me after. I got plenty of pictures to show you. So the problem that we are trying to uh, solve here, secrets management. Secrets management is difficult. If you're a developer, I'm sure you know this. How do you get secrets into your applications without exposing these secrets to people who should not have access to them? Usually, something that you hear right away is make sure you don't check in your secrets into code control, for example. This is a very basic thing, right? But how can we take these secrets then and make our applications use them when they need them? Secrets and code, they should be kept separate from each other. So our code should be able to be cloned by anyone without them actually having access to these secrets. It might also be that if you have different environments for your applications, you are also going to have different kind or different secrets uh, or different values for these secrets, let's say, to differentiate between a development or a production environment and so on. Finally, to be able to automate everything, you should be able to automate the injection of the secrets into your application. You don't want to have a manual step every time you do a deploy of an application where you go in and you copy in all your secrets by hand because this is just not going to work. It's going to be error prone, it's going to take way too much time, and you're just going to be unhappy, you're going to start looking for a new job. So here is a solution, and I'm saying it's a solution, A as in one off, not as in A and B. Uh, because there are a few different ways of solving this issue, right? But this is one that I've been using in some projects I've been involved in, and uh, it has worked quite well, so I, that's why I'm talking about it today. This solution, first off, is based on an application running in Kubernetes. So by show of hands, are there many here who work with Kubernetes on a regular basis? All right, I see about three hands, so, well... I hope the rest of you have a general idea of Kubernetes because I have very little time. Uh, but yeah, we're talking about an application that runs as pods inside of Kubernetes. Then our secrets are going to be living in an Azure Key Vault. And if you're not familiar with what this is, it's just a secure location for secrets that runs, in this case, in Azure. This is just what I'm using for my example, but the tool I'm going to show can actually connect to many different kinds of Key Vaults. So no matter what your organization uses, you can use this as well. Finally, the glue that joins these two things together and the tool really that I'm talking about is called the Kubernetes Secret Store CSI Driver. Those people did not have a marketer because that name is a mouthful and I have to read it every single time. I still don't remember what it's called, but the secrets provider is what I like to call it. So what is this Kubernetes Secret Store CSI Driver? According to its documentation, it's a tool that integrates secret stores with Kubernetes via a container storage interface, or CSI, volume. CSI is one type of thing in Kubernetes that allows you to mount something into a pod. It can be a disk, it can be a file, it can be just a variable, but something that is mounted into your pod and that appears as a file inside of your pod. So this tool is able to take these secrets and make them appear as files inside of your little pod with your application in Kubernetes. Yes, I did mention this basically. It mounts them as volumes. So I have a tiny demo about this. Uh, and in this demo, let's talk about the scenario that I'm going to show. First off, let's imagine that we have a company with internal resources. Now, by show of hands again, do many of you work in a company or a project where you have internal resources? And by, by that, I mean, for example, an internal website that only works if your computer has been set up with a certificate for your company, the little local certificate for your company. Does that even make sense? Yeah, I see a few hands. Okay, very nice. 
usually if you work in a medium to large organization, you're going to have this, right? That there's some internal services that require internal certificates. If you just take a random computer from a store and try to access them, HTTPS will not work because you require the internal security, right? Very good. So that's the first assumption. Internal CA authority, as I mentioned. And now you are building an application that needs to access some of these internal sites, internal services, and of course we want them to use HTTPS, right? For the case of this demo and for using TLS certificates. Uh, I built this scenario because this is a situation that I had at a client I was working with where they had a uh, Elasticsearch instance which is used for collecting logs. But to be able to send logs to the Elasticsearch instance, we needed to have the custom certificate that Elasticsearch was using for authenticating its HTTPS. So this was a scenario that we, we encountered, and we encountered, and we were able to fix it uh, in this way. The components for this particular demo, running locally in my machine, I'm going to use Minikube. If you're familiar with Minikube, uh, great. If not, it's basically just a tiny Kubernetes you can run on your computer but it is fully featured. This exact same thing will also work if you're using your own Kubernetes that you uh, deploy by hand, or if you're using uh, one of the, what are they called, managed ones like Azure Kubernetes services and so on. I also use the Azure CLI. Now if, this, uh, if you were here for the longer version of the talk, you would see me run all the commands. You're not gonna see it today, you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Uh, and finally, the demo itself, I built it as a Helm chart. So at the end of the talk, I will show the repository for it. You can clone it, play around with it, and uh, get an idea of how it works. So let's uh, get a, the very abbreviated demo. And uh, I wrote very abbreviated because, again, this is a lightning talk. You will not get to see me actually building the thing. I will just show you how it works, and you will have to take my word for it that it works. I also wanted an excuse to use this GIF because I love this GIF. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the history of this GIF, but turns out that the script uh, for that particular scene said that he had to look disappointed. But, uh, you know, big Hollywood actor, he didn't care. He just saw the word disappointed. He actually yelled disappointed instead. And they filmed it, and it actually made television. So I absolutely love this GIF. So, the demo uh, went too far. Let's see. Where is my mouse? There we go. So, first off, the first thing I have built already is a key vault. So, if you're familiar with the Azure interface, what I have here is just a standard key vault. It's just a standard store for secrets. Inside of my key vault, I have created a certificate. And this certificate is uh, it's self-signed. I created by hand earlier. Uh, you can actually see that it will help me authenticate a site called company.com. This certificate is for a very important company to the point that they actually own company.com, right? So very, very good here. Now, uh, one important element then, or what I will need to do uh, to be able to connect my Kubernetes uh, pod with this key vault is I will need to create a service principle. Please raise your hand if you do not know what a service principle is in Azure. All right, a few hands. A service principle, in very simple terms, is a username and a password. It's just an identity that you create in Azure, and you can give it specific permissions. So you create this, uh, let's call it a, a system username, and you can say you have access to this and to this, and that thing will only be used for those few things. So. I did create earlier a service principle, and now in my key vault, and is the text too small, or can you see it? In the back, can you see it well, or should I zoom in a little bit? It's a little small. It's a little small? Okay, I'll see if I can make it a little bit bigger without breaking everything. There we go. All right, so if I go to my access policies, you can see here, here is my service principle. That's also my user and my email, so please uh, send me some emails. Um, my service principle, and I have given it just get permissions on keys, secrets, and certificates, right? So once I have created that uh, service principle, I can get on with actually connecting my application to um, the, um, yeah, the key vault. Let's zoom in on this one as well. So in here, I have the, zoom in a little bit more. The definition for my, this is a Helm chart, let's see, first of all, this is a Helm chart where I have the definition for 
the client or my application that is running in Kubernetes. If you're not familiar with Helm charts, I won't get into it now again because of time, but it's basically just a way of putting things into Kubernetes. The things that are special about it are three things that I have needed to add to be able to connect these two things. So first off, I need to create a secret inside of Kubernetes. And in this secret, what I am putting is the client ID and client secret, these are the username and password of my service principal. So the user I created to access the key vault, I create a Kubernetes secret where I put the username and the password. These can be injected, for example, from a pipeline so that you don't have them in code. Then the next thing you do, once you have those things in place, you create, whoops, you create a, what is called a secret provider class. This is a custom Kubernetes resource that is provided by this tool, this uh, CSI secrets provider, whatever, the, the, the one with the really long name, right? A few things to notice in here, you can say which kind of provider it is that you're targeting. In our case, we're going with Azure. You give it the name of the key vault where your secrets are. And also you say which kind of objects or which things you want to pull from the key vault. In this case, I am pulling a certificate. You see the object type is certificate and it is called company certificate. If you remember, that was a name we gave it over here somewhere, right? their company dash certificate, right? Very good. And at the most basic, that's all I need to do to have my secrets already now in my Kubernetes cluster. But how do I consume these? Let's go now to the definition of the application itself. So this is just a standard Kubernetes pod, as you can see, nothing too special here. Um, Side note, if you're wondering how my app is actually resolving my internal company.com, there's this little trick here called uh, host aliases where you can pass custom DNS entries. So this is similar to a host file in a Linux system. So in here, I am saying company.com should resolve to this IP address instead of whatever the real company.com is, right? Side note. But inside of my container then the first thing i do is let's see where is this stuff now maybe it's further down no is it further up um yes so i create a or i declare a volume my volume is going to be of type secret store.csi.ks.io that is the specific name of the custom csi provider also i tell it that it should use the secret called key vault credentials down here that is, again, the username and the password of the service principal, right? So in this way, I can tell it, and, and of course, yes, I need to say which secret provider class it is that I am attaching. If you remember, it was the one right here. Yeah, I'm going to say it's this one, I believe. Very good. So by doing this, now I make the volume available in my Kubernetes. And then finally, how do I consume it? I just mount it like you would mount any regular Kubernetes volume. You just say, I'm gonna mount it, I'm gonna mount this volume, that's the one we declared a little higher up in the file. I'm gonna mount this specific thing from inside the volume, so this will mount just the file of the certificate itself, and I'm gonna mount it on this path. And then the last thing I do is I just run this update CA certificates, which if you're familiar with Linux systems, that's just a way of adding a new certificate to your application's key store. So at the end of it, what my application is doing, you can see it's very simple. It's just curling the URL of the backend service, which already has this certificate in place. And if we actually check the logs, I uh, had already checked them here, but the magic is gone. But anyways, the logs of my application, you can see it's actually reaching the URL and it is obtaining the content, which in this case is just a little bit of ASCII art, right? If you want to see it in action, Clone the repo, it has very clear instructions on how to do every single step from creating the key vault, creating the certificate, creating the service principal. You can also pass a flag to allow you to turn off and on the um, Kubernetes secret store CSI driver stuff so that you can also see the difference between those two. And uh, that is basically it, I believe. Uh, let's see. Yes, so there's the more information. If you go on my website, this uh, dam.engineer, you will find these slides, you will find those URLs in there. 
Um, yeah, get in touch. You got my Twitter there before Elon destroys it. You got my URL there as well. And uh, I got some stickers in the back and also some with me here. If you want a sticker, come on over, let me know if there's no one in the back. Thank you very much.